Hey there, fellows. Okay, so this vehicle I got right here is quite a nice one. Yeah, this one's good, still has life in it. And so here's what we're doing to it. Nope, we ain't gonna kill it. Out of the question. Now, you might remember the video where we replaced... A clutch with brake pads that would be thrown out by centrifugal forces. So yeah, they would be thrown out to grip to the... Drum, transfer the force to the gearbox, and set the car into motion. And it was moving along quite well, that thing. Very well indeed. But this time we're going a more complicated route. Coming at it from a different angle. We are going to be leaving the stock gearbox and clutch alone. And setting up the centrifugal clutches inside the wheels. It's difficult to imagine what this will look like. Though I do have some sort of understanding. I guess we'll see once we get to work. I do suspect there will be issues. But instead of guessing... Let's go ahead and set up a centrifugal clutch inside of a wheel. We fit centrifugal clutches to the rear wheels of a lot of Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Check out what we got here. The pads are sitting on individual axes, they get thrown out, and as for this, those are bolts that are going to act as a weight to increase the force with which the pads are going to be thrown out. And thanks to this here hub, the whole thing is going to rotate completely on its own. So the axle and this hub are separated from one another, meaning the car will be perpetually coasting because of the rear wheels being free to rotate. Locking them is going to involve these pads right here. So there it is, a centrifugal mechanism enclosed within a brake drum. Now we can't test it here, so I suggest we pack everything up and... Uh, go try this out at the test track. difficult to say how this is going to drive. Go ahead, pause the video and tell us your thoughts in the comments. Will it drive, will it not? Maybe it'll fly, who knows? Okay, let's go. Starting it. Okay, the engine is running. And we are ready. Getting it. Into gear. Into first to keep the rotational speed down. The car is gyrating, which tells us that something is in motion. Okay, I've released the clutch. But we're not moving. What if... That's odd. It's not moving in first gear. What if I try second? What, they don't work? Shouldn't they be getting pushed against the drum? It leaned forward a bit and stopped. You didn't move in second gear. It did a tiny bit. Well, a tiny bit, yeah. Let's use third, then. Is the rotational speed too low or what? Or the pads to press down? And I reckon there should be enough force. Something's rattling. Third gear. I've released the clutch pedal, we're standing in place. Now I'll... press the gas. Something seems to... nope.
And it's moving. But that was 5,000 RPM. Maybe you forgot to release the handbrake? Of course I did. Okay, well... Fourth gear. That is fourth. I've got my race logic to measure the speed. 1,500. Come on now, 2,000. Two and a half thousand. Three, and we're moving. Thirty-five hundred. We are moving. Four grand. Almost five. Oh, holy cow. Five thousand RPM in fourth gear. And we're off. Sixteen kilometers an hour. 20. Come on, 25. But 5,000 is too much. Let me try fifth. What if... Fifth gear. Four and a half thousand RPM. We're going 30. 35, 40, it popped out, damn it. Well, this works, just not the full 107%. And I smell burnt brake pads. Here goes nothing. Four and a half thousand RPM. Almost five. I'm scared to even imagine the rev count back there. One of them is locked, that's 40. 46. Almost 50. Holy cow. It moves. Create some distance and make it to a higher speed. You can really smell the burnt pads. It's pretty much the same smell as clutch, because the material is very similar. How much is that, 35? Come on. 35. Oh, wow, I am seeing a lot of smoke back there. And it's making it into the cabin. While I'm still rolling, I'd better flip around. The smoke, and now you get the same smell as when the brake sees on a tram. Right. Rolling into it. I can't see one of the wheels. 43. 46. 50. 55. 57. 60. Holy cow. But it does work. Was there a lot of smoke? Yes. Like a lot of it? Yeah. No, oh my, it's like a tram, am I right? Holy cow. Isn't that something? Oh my. Is it cold? Very hot. It is very hot. So here's the deal. The drum, the one to which we've attached the wheel, it's rotating much slower than the centrifugal pads. And so they're constantly slipping, you get friction and excess heat. The reason being that at a speed of 40, 50, 60 kilometers an hour, I'm in fifth gear and the engine is turning 5,000 RPM. I mean, can you imagine uh, 
how fast the pads are spinning. They are being pushed out by the centrifugal forces, but the grip just isn't good enough for the mechanism to confidently be set into motion. Let's see. He's accelerating, look at that. He's doing well. I can see a bit of smoke. Very nice. Oh, there's also smoke coming from the muffler on that side. That might not be from the muffler. That is a lot of smoke. Well, 59. 59? Should have kept going. Nothing's changing. You weigh less, shouldn't the car be faster? Let's call it 60. We've yet to make it go any faster. Gonna put it right into fifth. Here we go. I've got horrible rattles and vibrations. The rev count. Will this be a record? Come on. 68, 70, yes. 70 kmh. The temperature of these has gone way up. I mean, just take a look at the owl, the hubcap. It has gotten... It has gotten very hot. It's malleable now. You can go ahead and change its shape. Okay, now I suggest we head back. Lift the car, take everything apart, take off the wheels, the drums, and see what condition the pads are in. As well as the drum itself. What's going on with the hub and everything else? Okay, let's go. Okay, so here's the situation. We've removed the wheel, and this is what we see. Now, this drum used to be... And you can rewind the video and see that for yourselves. It used to be painted red. And the temperature got so high that the paint burned off. It wasn't heat-resistant, though. And the other interesting thing is, well, see this? The drum has cracked. The aluminum has a crack in it. And we've yet to remove it to see what's going on inside. What the iron friction surface looks like. Yeah, this got really hot. Even the grease has turned into... I don't even know what that is. I mean, it also burned up. What about the other drum that's on the left side? We unscrewed it and it has popped out. The bolts we used as weights are falling out. And the paint has also burned away. This one is all iron. Okay, what do we got? Yeah, you can clearly tell that this was... Overheating, you got blue spots. The weights we've welded on have fallen apart. Must have been under a lot of load. And the friction material on the pads is gonzo. Which is why the smoke ceased at a certain point. The pads just fell apart. Burned up and fell apart. And metal on metal uh, didn't give us good results. I mean to say that there was absolutely uh, no effect from it. And this pad actually has a bit of friction material left. The area that was contacting the drum, and you can clearly tell where that was, that part is fully worn. But this one has no friction material left at all. As for the drum, this one is entirely made of iron, and so it was able to hold up. Doesn't seem to have sustained any horrible damage. I don't see any cracks. It hasn't broken or fallen apart. It is intact, though it did get extremely hot. Now let's remove the aluminum one and see what's going on inside. 
Let's go to that side. There you go. And what do we see? Oh, this is just lovely. Will you look at that? Same situation with the pads. And they've even gone blue and they're warped. Oh my goodness. They must have gotten way hotter. You can tell that these got hot. Very hot. The pads are worn out. And what do we have here? Wow, this is pretty interesting. This has been worn down, I mean, obviously it would be. But here's what's really interesting. So this right here is an iron insert, which is actually cast in. I mean to say the drum is cast around this iron insert, and from the looks of it, the aluminum was melting. It was getting so hot that the aluminum couldn't take it and began melting. It looks like the temperature got so high that the aluminum was weakened and uh, crack formed. Or perhaps the insert expanded so much that they obviously expand at different rates and that's what made it crack. This got extremely hot, so it worked, but not for long. Almost 100%, maybe a tiny bit less. <laughs> but you saw it all for yourselves, you can be the judges as to how well this worked. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.